you want to answer a uh, question about Gerard Smith and what happened on the 21st and 22nd, coming up to the 22nd of October 2017? In your own words, tell us from beginning, we, um, by what time you and Morris, your husband, got possession of Gerard from wherever y'all got her from, that, uh, that Saturday, up until you found her in the career. Um, we picked Jariah up from Morris and I, and I we picked Jariah up from the Sitco gas station on 18, from Morris's auntie Annie. Um, she, auntie Annie had picked, auntie Annie picked Jariah up from Morris's auntie Nick, who's Jariah stayed the night with the night prior. Um, we had received word that his mom, Morris's mom, who's in the hospital, probably wouldn't make it past that day. So we wanted both the girls, Jariah and Ivy, to spend time and be around his mom, Morris's mom. So uh, we all went to River Region in Vicksburg um, we met there around 12 o'clock, and we stayed there all day until about 8.30, between 8.30 and 9 o'clock, whenever we stayed at Maybe Bay. And um, we left the hospital, went to the, the wing spot in Vicksburg. I cannot think of the name, but it's between the Mexican restaurant and Dollar General on Six Highway 61. Um, after picking up Morris's food, we went to Pizza Hut in Port Gibson to pick up my food. Um, after leaving Pizza Hut, we made it to the house. Uh, Aubrey was still asleep. Um, I believe Jariah woke when Morris got her out of the car. I put Aubrey in her best bed. Yeah. Morris brought Jariah to the bedroom, the master bedroom as well, uh -huh. and laid on the bed, changed her diaper, went to Leanne and Korea. Yeah, um, I kind of stirred a little bit, so I went to, you know, just coax her back uh -huh. to sleep. And uh, then I tried to clean up a little bit from the mess we left when we got in a rush that morning um, while Morris went into the shower. Um, after Morris, when Morris got out, was getting out of the shower, I was going in to put my towel and my clothes in, and that's when I heard Uriah kind of making a, a noise. Um, do I need to do more? It was like, talk. It was like, it was real low, it was like, talk, talk. And so, I went, I, when Morris said, well, I'll go check it. I said, no, it's okay. You know, you just get out of the shower. I'll go check. And so I just looked over in her crib, and she was still turned in the same position that he had laid, which was on her stomach, with her head turned to the right, with her baby doll in front of her, and her blue red behind her, and her sheet pulled up to, like, here. And um, she... She, she stopped, she, she stopped, and I went back in the bathroom, and then I went to take my shower, and I saw Morris when he got in, the bed. I mean, just when he got in the bed, uh, because when I got out, he was already asleep, um, and his PM was on TV. So he was asleep, you got a shower? Mm-hmm. Where'd you go? Um, because you gotta think about it, they had a game that Friday night. Um, he works from 6 o'clock in the morning, six, was that 6.30? We'll leave the house at 6.30 in the morning. Yeah. And then it's out on the field until about 10, and then he doesn't get home until about 11, 11.30, sometimes after 12. And then he had community service that morning with Capital League of, um, I don't know, I guess Alcorn, I guess Alcorn hosted. And um, so he had to get up and go to community yeah, service man. and be in Natchez, not in Natchez. I think on Alcorn campus for eight, but he also had to go pick up a couple of the football players that also are part of Capital League. But, um, and I don't take a short shower. I 
I'm in the bathroom for about 10 minutes, so I wouldn't, you know. It, it was normal for me to come out and use it. But, um, so, we get to sleep. It was about 11 o'clock when both of us were going to sleep. And, um, so, oh, it was way. Hold on. I completely forgot. I was just thinking, how is it 11 and we get home at 10? Morris and I sat in the sunroom after both the girls went to bed. We sat in the sunroom talking. He had like a little breakdown about his mom. Um, and we sat out there for about 20, 25 minutes, but we went outside. It's like the sunroom, as you see, is still part of the house. Um, and the hallway connects to both the nursery and the master bedroom. But then after that, that's when we went to go take a shot. There we go. So then, um, we got, he got into bed when he was asleep. I got into bed, turned the TV off, and sleep. He woke me up around 5.30 asking if we had any juice in the house. I said, no, we got some powder ready. Would you like me to put it on ice? And he said, no, you don't have to put it on any ice. Just bring me a bottle. So I said, okay. So I went to go through the, um, I would not normally walk through the nursery to get him a pot, we'll get whatever you want up, uh, up the kitchen. And I noticed you're out of sleeping in a, what seemed to me was an uncomfortable position. And whenever I see her sleeping in what seems to me is an uncomfortable position, I usually move her. And when I went to move her, she was cold. And Aubrey has, has a cold and has had a cold for about the past month. We usually sleep in a cold house, but since she's been sick, we've been trying to see if sleeping warmer will help her not stay so sick. So it was odd for her to be so cold, as warm as it is in the house. And um, so that along with how heavy she was, how heavy and how stiff she was, it really kind of like scared her. Cause I'm like half sleep and it like scared me for a minute. So I went and I got more and asked him to check on Jariah. And he got out the bed went to go, um, he turned her over and she was still hurt. Like this arm was like stuck here. And then her legs were still in the position they were. And her mouth looked, I, I didn't want to, I didn't, I didn't look at it long cause I, I couldn't look at it long. So, but it looked like her face had conformed to the shape of the, um, the crib the side of the crib and I knew her face was in the in the blanket. And so when I when um, her mom got there, wait, well, I think I got 911 and told them where to come. And then he called her mom and told her that there was an emergency was right and she needed to get to the house. Um I kept trying to figure out like, you know, what happened, what what happened, what what did we do, what did we do, what happened? Cause she's 14 months old, you know, says is 12 as you start wearing my says at 12 months and and all she had in the bed was her, her bunny red, her bed, her sheets. She wasn't tangled in the sheets. Her face was, she did have a, a, a rather large size pillow in the bed a little bit. You know, she was a big girl, so I didn't, I didn't understand. I don't understand. So that's, here we are today. All right, um, basically, as you know, we've been conducting an investigation and trying to figure out any and everything that took place. Mm -hmm. And we just basically wanted to go back at least 72 hours to just basically to see how Jariah was doing. Mm -hmm. And you've explained that you kept in contact with Jariah October the 21st at 12 p.m. <clears throat> yeah. at Sitco in Port Gibson, Mississippi. That's the gas station that's located on 18. Highway 18. And basically, when you saw her on October the 21st at 12 p.m., she was in the custody of Annie. Jennings. Okay. And how was Jariah when she came into your custody? Or came into your custody? 
she was dry and she was she was kind of she was calmer than usual. And she would but she was still she fussed when I changed her clothes. Oh you changed your clothes where? In the car, in the um in the back seat of the uh the charger we were in because when we got her she had on some dirty sleeping clothes that she had had on from the, the night prior. And um, I had brought an outfit from home to change her into. Okay. And she said, that, how was she acting? When she, was, she was calm. She was, she was, she wasn't playful yet. It takes a minute to warm up, but um, she was calm. She ate some chicken that Morris had went inside to sit down and got. Um, she was just fine. Just fine. No, okay. Then no signs. Did you see? You was changing her clothes, so mm -hmm. you had a good eye shot of her. You could see everything on her, right? Mm -hmm. Did you see any signs of physical abuse or anything at that time? Um, Dry has really bad eczema, and I I can't recall if the spots had cleared up. But at one spot, one time she had it looked like it could have been burn marks, but that's just how bad her eczema had gotten. Um. They were like, she had patches, white, white patches on her legs. This is Saturday? No, this, I said, I can't recall if they were there, but, um. What did you observe on Saturday, October 21st? Nothing, nothing abnormal. Nothing okay. abnormal. She was, but that's not, nothing out of the ordinary. She's, she is used, I saw the normal eczema. She had so really nothing, So nothing that out of the ordinary. caused alarm. Okay. All right. What kind of clothes did you put on when you were mm -hmm. What was it? She had on a, on an outfit that my mom had bought her. It was a um, a pink strappy, but they they weren't like strap straps. They were like thick straps, but they weren't sleeves. Um, it was pink and it was like the it had like a few layers on it that passed uh, the top part. And it was like sheer and sparkly. With what was it, a onesie? <clears throat> it was a shirt. She had on. It was a top. Was like a. It was flowy, but it stopped like here. And she had on. It had a pink flower on it, and then she had on pink bottoms. Okay. Pink, okay. Pink, pink, pink bottoms. So did you comb her hair? Not that day. Okay. Because no, we were headed to the hospital. I I wanted to get her <coughs> the that morning. So I could do her hair and get her ready because we were already planning on going to visit his mom after he got out of um, the community service. And then her mom had said that she needed some winter clothes. So we were planning on taking her to get that and her Halloween costume that evening. That's what we had told her mom. But when we when they said that we needed to be at the hospital, we stayed at the hospital all day. Okay. So y'all, pretty much uh, when y'all picked up Jariah at the sick on Highway 18, y'all left there and went to Vicksburg, Mississippi, to the uh, hospital where Morris's mother is at. Y'all was there about, what, 1 o'clock, 12.30? We met, we didn't, we got Jariah around 11. Okay. Um, about 11.30. Okay. And we made it to Vicksburg a little after 12. Okay, a little after 12, you know, we're at the hospital. Mm -hmm. And that's where you guys remained until what time? About between 8.30 and 9. Did not leave the hospital? Never left. Okay, and Aubrey was in your care? Uh, well, actually, both of the girls were, because that's like, well, I didn't say it on this interview. There was about 15, 20 family members there. So, both girls were left hopping. Okay, so they were basically, someone was handling them the entire time they were there at the hospital. Mm -hmm. Okay, did you notice anything happen to any of the kids? Mm -hmm. Okay, nothing significant happened as far as physical, did, and that. did they make a mistake or someone run and hit their head on something or mm -hmm. nothing? Okay, so basically what time did you guys leave the hospital? About 8.30 or 9. Between 8.30 and 9. P.M.? P.M. Okay, and when you left the hospital, you guys walked out to the car, mm -hmm. got in the, what, what type of car is it? Uh, a, I don't know the year, but it's a Dodge Charger, a white Dodge Charger. Got into the white Dodge Charger. Mm -hmm. And who were you carrying as you were walking out of the hospital? I carried your ride. You was carrying your ride. Mm -hmm. And Morris was carrying our And her car seat. And her car seat. Mm -hmm. Okay, and you guys put, what, what did you place in the, what, what was the placement in the car? Dariah's <clears throat> car seat sits behind my seat. Mm -hmm. And Aubrey's 
seats behind more seats, but it's kind of in the middle between the middle seat and the other seat, other seat. But basically, it was Jariah and then Aubrey. So Jariah was in her car seat, Aubrey was in her car seat behind more. Okay. And so you were on the front passenger mm -hmm. side. And when you went to the, uh, well, you got in the car, the babies were buckled in, mm -hmm. in their car seats. Mars got in. You guys proceeded to go 61 South to the wing place. Mm -hmm. And that's where you stopped. Mm -hmm. When you got to the wing place, what took place? Well, heading to the wing spot, something started going weird with the car. It was like, felt like we had kind of a blowout. So when we got to the wing spot, we both got out and looked at the back right tire and so and felt the inside it was small so we actually was trying to contemplate that we need to get a room in um big bird and i said no i think you know we can make it home because we still got three good ones as long as you don't speed it's not raining or it's not wet we should be fine and um because it was a little it was a little drizzling but you know we so he went inside we had our twinkle twinkle little star plane to keep the girls asleep. And he went inside, checked on his order, stayed in there for about two or three minutes, and they were still, it wasn't done. What were you doing? I was sitting in the car on my phone, Facebook. Oh, you were on Facebook? Mm -hmm. oh, okay. And he comes outside and sits in the car and said, well, no, I didn't know if he needed, because he left his phone in the car. He said, I wasn't sure if he needed anything. You know, they went down my food, so I came, you know, just, he was just checking. So, Jabari, I mean, uh, Jariah, still sleeping? Mm -hmm. Twinkle Twinkle Little Star is a godsend for those two days. Okay. So, um, he, so came, we, he got his, um, yeah, he went back, he got back out, went inside, got his food, and came back out. Okay. Got in the car, went to Pizza Hood. And y'all proceeded to y'all make any sudden stops on your way from Vicksburg? No, because like I said, we, I, we had to make sure we were driving carefully because they had the right time. So you know for a fact there were no jerking or anything of any sort? So nothing would cause the baby head to hit anything no, in there? No. Okay, so you proceeded from the wing place to Port Gibson, Mississippi? Mm -hmm. And when you got to Port Gibson, Mississippi, your first stop was? Pizza Hood. Okay. And I'm trying to remember who went in. I'm pretty sure they were there late at night, Morris went in. So I, I, I'm pretty sure Morris went in. Yeah, because I said, because I said, if I had known he was going in, I would have ordered more because he would have had to pay for it. So Morris went in and he got it and he came back out in the car and while he's in there. I was a baby when he was fine asleep. Y'all still like, playing Twinkle Twinkle Little Star? Because mind you, they had been up all day. Okay. They, 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 neither one of them got a nap. Um, they had just fallen asleep before we left the hospital. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, so we get home, and, um, and that was the last stop. Okay. So after pizza, what did you guys go? Home. Were there any sudden stops in the car? No bumping or anything. So when you get home, what happened? Um, Morris got Jariah out. That she did wake up when we pulled her to the house. And um, I got Aubrey out. And she was still asleep. And um, we both went in. He opened the door and both went in the house. And um, put, put Aubrey in her bassinet. He changed Jariah's diaper. He put, changed Jariah what, what part of the house? In the, in the master bedroom, he okay. put her on, on our bed and he put her diaper in the diaper jean. And um, then he went and put her and laid her down in the crib. And what were you doing? When he laid her down in the crib, I had gone to the front because I was going to try to start cleaning up. I was going to try to start cleaning up and he said, and I don't know how I forgot that part. He said, can we talk? And so he went and said. This is before he showered. This is before he shot. We okay. went and sat in the sunroom. Okay. And um, we sat out there and talked for a few minutes. And uh, that's what I told him. That I, I, of course, I don't understand how he's feeling because I haven't lost my mom. My mom is a sick. And, you know, we just had a husband and a wife talk sit, sitting in the sunroom. Then Jariah went back to sleep? Then Jariah went back. And that's, we had never had a problem since Jariah started. 
we put Jariah, when we first moved into this house, Jariah was sleeping in the bed with me and boys. Um, and then one day, we were in Jackson at the mall, me, Jariah, and Morris. And her mom, this was like back in February, January, February. Her mom called and said that DHS was coming to our house the next day because she had had a call. Somebody called in on her. And they were coming to our house and we were supposed to have this long list of stuff to make the house appropriate for Jariah. Um, which included a crib, which we didn't have yet because we had just moved into the house that Christmas. And um, so we went to Walmart that night. We got a, a crib of little outlet plugs. We got smoke detectors and all kinds of stuff to abide by what the agency said we needed to have. And um, so that's why we put you right in the crib because DHS said we would get fined or something if we didn't. And, um, and maybe at the third night we put her in her crib, it was like when you laid her in there and you say, all right, it's time to go night night, she would lay down, would not argue. Even if she didn't go straight to sleep, she would lay down until she fell asleep. So we never had a problem with her laying down and going to sleep ever. She was just, she was that OB. You say lay down on night night, she would lay down until she fell asleep. Okay, so on October the 21st, Saturday night. She did not wake up. She stayed While you guys there. were in the um, sunroom, mm -hmm. Jariah was asleep. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, and how long did you, how long did you, would you estimate y'all were in the sunroom? About 25 minutes. 20, 25 minutes. 20, 25 minutes in the sunroom mm -hmm. talk. Mm -hmm. Okay. And after that? After that, he went to take a shower. And that's when I started finishing up what I was doing in the living room. And um, then he went, no, he was getting out of the shower. The door was open and I heard him turn the shower off. So I was going and put my things in there. And that's when I heard Jariah stirring. <clears throat> and you know, when he checked on her, she was fine, no signs of distress. I said, okay, she's fine. And then I went to my shower, came out, <coughs> Morris was asleep. ESPN was on, and I got in the bed and I was All right, now tell me this. Mm -hmm. The noise, describe that noise again. It was like, ka ka When did you hear that? Right when I was about to get in the shower. Okay. So you heard the noise when you was about to get in the shower. And I was walking, I was, because I had come through the nursery, put my stuff in there, put my stuff in the bathroom, and it, so the door was open and the nursery door was open. It's probably made about five, six feet apart. And so it was, I heard it. He heard it too when he said, I'll go check on I said, no, you know, you, you're just getting out of the shower. It's okay, I'll go. And she was, she was okay. So you went in and checked on mm -hmm. So you was the last person to see Gerard. Well, I was going to say technically, but, you know, after he got out of the shower, he had to go to the nursery. And I'm, I'm, May, I, I didn't see him, but I'm like 98% sure he, of course, looked over and saw her well as well. And then when I was coming out of the bathroom, I went um, into the bedroom, and I looked in, and she was fine as well, and I went down the bed, so yeah, I was the last one to see her. Okay. <laughs> and basically, when you heard her making that sound, mm -hmm. he went in and checked on her as well. I said, I, I said, I was going to assume after he got, you know, put on his towel and was walking to the bedroom that he checked on as well. But you're not positive on that? <laughs> we didn't talk about that. Okay. What did he say it was? He said it sounded like a cough. Okay. But it didn't, I guess the part maybe could have sounded like one of him, mm -hmm. but it sounded like talking to me. Like so, the last time when you saw her, what, what position was she in? On the pillow, face turned to the right, with her black baby, with a little baby doll in front of her, and her blue bunny behind her, and the blanket still pulled. Like, that noise she was making did not interfere with her placement at all. She was still 
cover it, the sheet pulled up about midway, back to the top of the bed, and that was it. She wasn't disturbed at all? Was well, she laying on her back, side, yeah. stomach? She was laying on her stomach? Mm -hmm. And who put her in the bed? Morris did. Morris put her in the bed. And she was laying on her stump. Mm -hmm. That's what you saw? Mm -hmm. Okay. Was she in the center of the bed in the crib? Or was yeah, she it was probably, it was. No. It was more so, it was like between the center and between the left side. So she wasn't like dead set in the middle, but she wasn't against the crib wall either. Okay. All right. And you checked on her. Everything's fine. Walked in, walked through the nursery, <coughs> tiptoed to the nursery because we just got the floors done and they, they creak real bad now. But walked through, got in the bed, and went to sleep. When you got out of the shower and you peeked in, she was fine. Mm -hmm. She was still on her stomach. Mm -hmm. When you got in the bedroom, the master bedroom, what was Aubrey doing? Sleep. What was Morris doing? Sleep. Okay. And you got to bed. Mm -hmm. And what happened next? I woke up at 5.30. Her boys woke me up and asked if we had anything to drink in the, um, in the house. And I said, and he said we had any juice in the house. So we had pyrated, it's on top of the refrigerator. Um, it was, and I said, you want to put it on ice? He said, no. You don't have to put it on ice, you just go give me a bottle. So I went to go get it. Right. And I saw that she was in that weird position, like what seemed to me to be an uncomfortable position. Well, describe that position. Um, I want to say, but I really wasn't looking at her body. I was just looking at, you know, where her face was. Because um, I, I want to say maybe a part of her was under the cover, I can't remember. But I just remember seeing her looking uncomfortable with her face in the pillow, like in the kind of in the. It was like this is the bed, this is the wall, and her face was like in between. Was she on her stomach? She was on her back. Stomach. She was on her stomach. She was on her stomach. And that, that's how I remember. She was on her stomach, yep. and her face was face down. Now, what you're describing to me, and correct me if I'm wrong, you're you're saying that she was still in the crib, mm -hmm. and she was laying on her stomach, mm -hmm. and her face was wedged between the mattress and the framing of the crib. Yes. Um, I'm trying to think of what the pillow was. I can't see it. But what you just said was based. I, I don't know if it was wedged, but I know... That's what it looked like to me. That's what it looked like. And what you do? I I tried to move her because I was like, ah, you know, because we found her sometimes, and she she completely turned around, and she was turned. She was against the crib as well. She was against the crib, and I'm like, well, let's look at look at Jariah. He'd be like, can you come look at Jariah? Look at look at you know she turned, and you know we we be like, hi hi, that thing sleep well, and um. Right. So I went to move her. I, I, I want to say I, I, I tried to grab her like by her shoulder, and it was, she was really heavy. Like you know when you move somebody's shoulder, just the shoulder move, but it was like stiff, like an arm. Like when you move it, the whole thing moves. And. She was really, really cold. She was really, 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 really abnormally cold. And so I went to my man and ran. I got Morris. And he got up. What'd you go get Morris for? Because it was like I had like a, a flashback kind of to working in a nursing home and finding a resident that, you know, had, had passed or seen it. Because I actually had seen my first. Resident right before I left. What you and mean? What you, what, like I had never, there? because I was pregnant the whole time I was working at Paper County Senior Care. Okay. 
And um, so they would never, you know, superstition, pregnant women are not supposed to see dead bodies. So anytime somebody would pass, they wouldn't live. But that's what you were referring to as a flashback. Right, yeah. That's now, right. De- describe what you what you did when you well, saw when I, when the I, When I felt that and when it was heavy, when it was hard for me to turn on, I immediately went in the bedroom. What were your mindset then? What were you thinking? I was, I, I, I was, I don't know, I was just scared. I was Why scared. were you scared? Because I don't deal with, with, with it, it was like, my mind immediately, because I watched so many scary movies and so much, and my mind immediately went to what's wrong with this baby. It was like, and it was like, I was half, I was half asleep, and I wasn't thinking straight. And I, I, looked, I couldn't see her really. Because like I said, it was just the light from the, from the night light flat shining on. And I don't think I wanted, I think I thought something is, something is really wrong, but I didn't want to see it. Why would you think something was really wrong? I don't, I'm telling you, I was like, I was like, when she, when I felt how cold she was, when I felt how cold she was, and when I felt how hard it was for me to try to turn her over, but that's what made me think something was wrong. Yeah, what that big ass it was, it was just, it was, it's a feeling that I never forget, but it's, I just can't put it into words more than she was just so cold and so heavy and so still. Okay. So what did you do at that point? I went and I got boards. What what placement did you leave to write in that crib? Well, like I said, it was it was all I did was try to grab her shoulder and when her entire body tries to start but I couldn't lift it. I left I she I'm pretty sure she was I'm pretty sure I left her in the same position I found her. And what was that? Face down, face face down on the bed. Well, on her stomach. On her stomach. And her face turned. Right, and on her face, her face didn't turn. It was still in the same okay. between the bed and the, like her neck didn't turn. Nothing moved. Okay. So then, what did you do? You went I went in and I, I got more and I said I screamed at him. I said, "Morris, come come check on Jariah." You left out of the room or you stayed in the room? In the nursery? Yeah. No, I went to the, I went because it's like maybe two or three feet from. Mm-hmm. The nursery to the bedroom, and I went and I said, "Morris, come, come check on the ride." He got, he got out the bed, jumped out the bed, and he came. And I don't remember him turning her over, but I remember looking in the crib when she was on her bed. So both of you guys were in there without turning the light on to really. <clears throat> he did. He did. He turned on the light before he moved her. Who turned on the light? Morris did. Morris turned on the light before. So did you leave out of the room? Mm-hmm. Or you stayed inside. Yeah, I stayed in the room. And then I, no, when he turned her over, I ran and got his phone. I did that. I'm trying to figure out how Morris got the phone because I know he did. He did because when I screamed and woke him up, or when I screamed him to get out of the bed, I don't think he grabbed his phone. Now, did you scream and wake him up, or did you scream? No, he was out. We, we just woke up. When I screamed to get him up, mm-hmm. I can't recall how he got. I don't. I, I just remember screaming, telling him to call nine one one. Okay. And he called nine one one. At that point, where are you? I'm in. I'm still in the nursery. He's on the phone, but then I, I leave the nursery because he's in the hall screaming to the lady on that now. What is he saying? My baby, my baby is dead. Can you send somebody? My Did he baby. say that before he went into the room? No, we didn't call 911 until he turned her over. I think I was, I didn't want, I think I was too scared of what my my background was telling me was there and I didn't want to see it. And I think, I'm pretty sure, because I didn't, for some reason, I didn't have the strength to turn it over. 
So that's why I said, come check on Jariah. I told him, I said, come check on Jariah. And he ran in there, he turned on the light. And he said, my baby, my baby. He said, Jariah, wake up, baby. Jariah, wake up. But she was blue. She was, she was fully blue. And I knew. And he knew. And he called. He was calling our woman one and He was asking them to send an ambulance. You saw her face and it appeared to be blue? And it was blue and it was like... It was like when you see a child put their face on the window and the face kind of smears. That's what her face looked like. Okay. And basically, you didn't. You left the room and told him to come out, come to, come here. Uh -huh. He came into the room. You saying he turned her over? Or you turned her over? He turned on the light. He turned her over. He, he turned was her screaming over. at her to wake up. And that's when you saw her face to appear to be blue. Right. And at that point, what happened? I said Moore's call 911. Mm -hmm. And so he called 911. He's telling the lady on the phone that his baby's dead. His baby's dead. His baby's dead. They need to send somebody. They need to send somebody out there. And she couldn't understand what he was saying because he was screaming. And I was screaming at him, telling him to, to, just, to just give me the phone. And he wanted to do it. He wanted to call. And he wanted to be the one. And he was telling the lady where to come. And then he got the phone with her. Still screaming. And he called the baby's mom. And told her that it was an emergency with your body and she needed to get to the house. They went up. Then. That's when all the officials come to the house? That's when. Her, her mom gets there. Jariah's mother? Mm -hmm. What's her name? Deidreana Smith. Deidreana? Mm -hmm. She arrives at your house? Mm -hmm. She arrived there before any officials? Mm -hmm. And she was called after? After 911. Okay. And what happened when she, she got there? She, Morris, walked her in the room and he said, we just woke up and this is how we found him. And what were you doing? I didn't have one. I was running. When she, when I saw her pulling up, I went in my room to put on some clothes. There to throw on some clothes. And then when she came outside, when she came in there, um, she saw her and she started screaming and she asked what happened and I said I don't know I said I don't know the only thing I could think of is is maybe she suffocated in that pillow speak up I, 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 oh I said I'm sorry I'm sorry I'm sorry I was trying. I said I don't know the only thing I could think of is maybe she suffocated in that pillow based on how I had found her and this is what you're telling me Toronto uh huh I said yes it is I guess it's just, I said, I think she's suffocated in her sleep. And she said, um, and she said, what do you mean? I said, I don't know, D. I said, I do not know. I said, I, this is just how we found her. And so she got herself up and took it up and she went outside. She started making a phone call. And. What was Morris doing? He was outside on the phone. Um, but he was dead. Okay. What did you do? Oh um, man, I restayed asleep through my screaming, Morris's screaming, Dijon. No, my screaming and Morris screaming. But when Dijon started screaming, I re woke up, so I was tending to her. And where were you? Oh, uh, in the living room. Did you draw a diagram earlier? I did. Okay. Can you point out the? Uh the diagram where it's the uh, sunroom. You, you labeled everything, the sunroom, the living room, and everything? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. And you said that you took Abra, Abra, where? I took Abra in the living room. In the living room. And that's what you said. Mm 
and Morris was outside. And Deidrana was. She was sitting on the front porch calling her family members. And at that point, Jariah was still in her crib. And did Deidrana touch her or do anything or move her? So basically, she was still the way that Mars had left her. Mm -hmm. Okay. And is it anything else that you can think of? I mean, after that, her family members started coming. They came. It was right. so. Tell me this: what what happened? What do you, what, what 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 do you think happened? Or what do you know happened? I know we put her to bed the same way we put her to bed every night. And when I say we, it's interchangeable, we'll put her to sleep, which is on the stomach, uh, baby doll, boo bunny, sheet of bone, um, no restrictive clothing, no nothing. What does she have on? She had a onesie. She had on a onesie? Mm -hmm. And what color was that one? I don't, I don't remember. I, and I reckon Morris changed her into the onesie before she went to bed. Because like I said, she had on that flowy top with the pink bottoms. But when um, I had went in there, when, you know, we saw her that morning, she had on the onesie. So I reckon Morris, you know, got her ready for bed. So you saw her, the last time you saw her, she had the onesie on or she was under the cover or what? What, you mean like the, the very last time I saw her? No, the last time. Oh, before I, she went to the went, bed? Yeah, before, um, before you got in the shower. You, I don't recall what she had on um, when she was laying in the crib. Because she had on a onesie and she had on a onesie that morning. Where are you getting that she had a onesie on? I saw her. What color? I don't, I don't know. Because I, I just remember boys asking the coroner, could she put on some pants before they took her out? And he, he told her he, she had to have on what she had on. And what did she have on? Just that one. He thought I don't remember <coughs> what color it was. But I just remember seeing the flat for the ones. Because like I, I didn't want to see it like that. Okay. All right, um, Investigator Jefferson has some additional information as it pertains to this investigation, which is ongoing. And I'm going to let um, Investigator Jefferson um, inform you of what um, the coroner report revealed. Are you familiar with that, what the coroner report revealed, or the autopsy? You sure? Oh, okay. All right. Corner states, 14 month old child found dead by her father. Not breathing. Father called 911. Claim County Sheriff Department called. Claim County Corner called. Corner ordered autopsy. That's basically what his report said. So, you, know, you know what an autopsy is, right? Mm -hmm. That's what the state of Pacific medical examiners, they go in, they do this day in, day out. And very experienced in this. And basically, they they know their stuff, and they work and give us information as it pertains to the evidence that that uh, cause the, they give us a cause of death and a manner of death. Mm -hmm. All right, and basically, uh, we have a provisional autopsy report right now, and James is going to inform you of the um, information that the medical examiner revealed from his autopsy of Jariah. Okay. Cause of death: multiple blunt head trauma. Man of their homicide. Really? Yes, ma'am. That's how she died. Really? Yes, ma'am. Wait, she didn't fall. She no. didn't hit her head. He said it's not called about fall. How was it? Somebody did. Got that baby today. Do we get to take a polygraph or anything? Basically, we're just trying to find out what I, I didn't. 
I don't know if you want to take one or not. I'm, I'm basically we want to know what happened. No, because they already know. They already said I kept this baby. And I didn't. I didn't touch her. I didn't lay her down. Who said that? That's why I was quick Gibson. That's why I called Lieutenant Gibson yesterday because. You need a moment? No, I'm okay. Just take, take your time, take your time. I don't know when it could have happened. And I was talking to um my sister-in-law and she said, uh, but did she did she fall? No, I was talking to uh, um one of my fellow nurses at the nursing home who's also a friend of Adriana's family. And she said, well, did she fall? Did she get ahead? I said, no, I said, Right hand hit her head with us since July 27. And that was the reason why we were only getting her every other weekend because when she fell from learning how to walk, they tried to say that it was on purpose, which we had never, July had never gone home with a single scratch. Before January, before July 27, and we had had her since November 16th of last year. And so when they was trying to say that I did it, I said, no, I said, this, this is not my child for me to be putting myself in this position. So I said, Morris will get her every other weekend, and we're not going to get her unless you're here with me. So that way, nothing can be said. And so we were getting her every other weekend. She was going over his mama house on Fridays. And Saturday morning, Morris would pick her up and she'd come spend Saturday with us, go to church Sunday, and we'd take her back home Saturday and then Sunday afternoon. That night, that baby was fine in that bed. She, and like I said, we had never had a problem with her going to sleep, so it wasn't like she was crying. And we got frustrated. Like I know that's that's something that happens. She like she she doesn't cry. She she was crying at one point when she realized that not not this not the past weekend, but she used to cry when she realized my baby was born away because at first she was like a baby, and then when she realized that Ivory was there to stay, she was she went she went into baby mode and she would cry. But then she started getting better. She wouldn't she wouldn't cry when she came over. She 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 would play. She would she would hold Aubrey. Matter of fact, we did. I did her toenails and her fingernails the weekend before, and the coaches were there. And she went out and let them see her nails and her toes. We had no reason to hurt this baby. And and but I went anyway. Back to what I was saying. Y'all need to ask that girl, Deidreana, because we didn't hurt that baby. Okay, so. Now, that's what we're getting at. So, you said that you guys were the only two at the house that night. Mm -hmm. But you're saying Danielle and... No, she... The, this is how she got to our family. Adriana had court. Or something. She had to go to court for something on Friday. And, um... And she had Uriah in Vicksburg. Danielle is Morris's cousin. She ran into Deidreana that day, and she said, well, let me get Jariah. So Deidreana gave Jariah to Danielle. Danielle called me, and she was like, do you recognize that cry in the background? And I said, mm -mm, I didn't hear a baby crying. And she said, that's Jariah crying. And I said, no, I said, give her the phone. And I said, Jariah, Jariah. And she, she kept on crying. I said, put me on FaceTime. So she called me through Messenger on Facebook. And I said, Jariah. And she looked at me and she said, huh? And I said, we a big girl, right? And she said, uh-huh. I said, so we don't do that. I said, we don't cry like that, right? And she said, uh-huh. And so it was a little boy trying to wipe her nose. I said, no, no. So you give that tissue to Jirai. He gave Jirai the tissue. I said, now, now show him your big girl and you wipe your face. You wipe your nose and wipe your face. She wiped her tears off. She wiped her nose. And I said, you okay? She said, okay. And 
she went with Danielle to her house, and then I kept telling her to bring the baby to, I said, okay, you can bring Jariah to our house. And she said, um, well, my mama want her tonight. And I said, well, y'all need to ask Morris that, because that's his child. You know, you can't just be telling him where his child I'm going. She said, well, my mama want her tonight. So I, uh, I said, well, y'all text Morris and ask him. Morris said, full of her thing. So <coughs> she said, she sent, Danielle sent Jariah with Andrew, which is Morris' brother, to his auntie's house. So Andre, Andre, Andrew took Jariah to Auntie Ned's house. And they stayed the night over there. Let me say this way, you going to I was at the autopsy. The pathologist says nothing. She could have walked around with a plane. Like she did the hospital thing. She wouldn't have been like that. When this happened, it was massive. I don't, I don't know. So her walking around playing the hospital it hadn't happened yet. What do you mean? It was massive, according to the doctor. It was severe. Like that, she could have played with eight, been normal. We gotta take some. We gotta take some. I, I, I understand your doctor. He been doing this. We need to take some, um, some tests. I, some, some. We need to take some tests because this, this. That's I, what the doctor did. He did an autopsy. Say that again. That's what. Yes, the doctor I know. Did. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about lie detector tests. Don't y'all do that? Uh, we can arrange that to happen. Well, we need to do that. Put me and Morris on that because this. We, I, I'm not saying that you are. I, I, I'm saying it. I know you're not. And I know y'all not accusing nobody. But what you just read to me and what we are telling you, didn't nobody have that baby but me and Morris. We did not hurt that baby. We did not hurt that baby. How did the baby get hurt? I don't know. I should have never took that baby in. If she wouldn't, if he wouldn't hurt her, I would have hurt it. I would have, she would have looked different. And when I came out, she did. While Morris was in the shower, what happened? I told you, I was just up in there, just trying to finish cleaning up what I had started in the living room. Then I walked to the room to get my stuff um, for the shower. And I walked back through the nursery to um put it in the bathroom. And that was it. The so you didn't have to make her go to sleep? She was already I'm, asleep? I'm telling you, we never had to make Jariah go to sleep. She didn't cry if we told her it was it was time to go to sleep. Matter of fact, sometimes we would have to wake, make her get up. We would have to, like, we would have, she would sleep well into the day if we loved. We would have to wake her up and we woke up. That's how well she slept. So she slept overnight? She slept overnight fine. We didn't have to touch her. We didn't have to do nothing. And she went to sleep about what time? We made it back by 10, so it was maybe between 10, 10, 15, she was laid down. And what adult, how many adults was in the house? It was just me and Morris. That's it? That's it. And so how, how did the baby sustain the, the I don't injuries? know. I don't know. I don't understand. I don't understand. Did she eat? Well, she was eating all day. She, she 
ate with my husband. She ate with um Morris' daddy. Thank you. She ate with Morris' daddy. I had I had all of it because she had potatoes, she had sandwiches. Me and her set up and ate some ice chips for a little bit. So when you got home, when did y'all eat? You and Morris. Before you found her that morning, did Mars ever get up out the bed that you know of? Because it, it's, it's like we wake each other up if we move because the bed, we, we got the bed from somebody. So it was um the frame, we got the frame from somebody. So it's like middle and creaky. So when you move, it'll wake you up. So you don't know how Jariah is sustained? Man, I don't years. know. I I don't know. I don't know. And then the pathologist is saying that she couldn't have played. Y'all, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. You ever had to discipline Jeriah? No. Never. Yeah. I left. Well, it was. She's not my baby, so I didn't want to. I didn't want to have to spank her. I left it to Morris, but Morris just did like, like when she would cry. He didn't discipline her like I would discipline Aubrey. Like when if I when Aubrey gets a little older and she's crying for no reason, she's gonna get a popping on the legs. Like my mama did me. But when Jariah would cry, and I'm like, Morris, come get Jariah, he would take her, and he would separate her, and he would like, like he would take her with him, and take her in the front, and they would watch like ESPN. Or he would take her and they would play with, play with Brian, the dog we have. But he never put his hands on her. He never disciplined her like that, it was more, He's like one of these modern age parents that just want to talk to the baby. And get, get so have you ever disciplined? <laughs> I've never, I've never had to. I, like I said, I always look to Morris because I never wanted anything. I never wanted to, anything that could be said that I take it out of context. Like if I popped her and it left a mark, I don't want them to say, you beating on the baby. So I never wanted no kind of reason for my name to be in no mess here because it was so easy for it to get in there. So how did Gerard sustain that injury? I don't, I don't know. What, what ideas do you I have? Do you think? Because I'm basically what I'm gathering from you, you're saying that Morris wouldn't have done it. I mean, what now? So yeah. who else is left in the house now? I'm left in the house, but I know I didn't touch the baby. That's what I'm telling you. I didn't put her to bed. Morris put her to bed. We didn't, neither one of us got up. But I don't care if we would have got up. I don't care if we would have slept in different rooms. Wouldn't have been no reason to hit that baby, to, to hurt that baby. You know how much anger it takes to have to hurt a baby like that? Speaking of that, what is your relationship with Deidreana? I noticed that you, uh, let me let me get this right mm -hmm. and help me if I'm wrong. You said in the initial mm -hmm. um, statement that y'all were best friends before no. y'all even met Morris. No. Did I get that wrong? Yes. Tell, I didn't know her. Name. I didn't know her until I moved here last summer. I was um we got married on twenty third, July was born on twenty sixth. I didn't know about Jariah until I was three months pregnant in October. How did you feel about that? Oh, I was hurt. I mean, my husband just had a one night stand with a girl and she got pregnant and moved me to a new city. 
everybody knew but me, but I never took it out on DJ. That's why we were good. We weren't best friends, but we were good enough friends because I knew it wasn't her fault. I, it was Morris's fault because Morris did it. So you only know her through Morris. Mm -hmm. You never known her before. No, I, I, I didn't know nobody from here. Um. So you you never said that y'all were friends. No, we were. No, no, I never said we were friends. I I never knew her before. But y'all was like sisters or something. No, I feel like sister wives because of how good we were with Jerry. But not sister wives to the term where we share boys. But like sister wives to the point where she could call me and be like, "Hey girl, what you doing?" And I'd be like, "Nothing at home." what my baby doing. You know, it was like that kind of relationship. The only thing that kind of caused some turmoil on it was when I kind of like put my foot down. Why you I, put your foot down? Because it was one night, like last year, um, I, think it, I had been at work all day and she asked me to keep Jariah with that night and I didn't mind because she, because she made it sound like she had to go to work. And then I found out she went out. And so I was like, hey, you know, I'm considerate of you. Let's, let's be considerate of me. If, if you got somewhere to go, um, I, I said, I don't mind keeping Jariah. But just, like, keep in mind that I'm pregnant and I, I'm, I'm working too. You know, she kind of didn't like that. But we were still cool. I mean, we were still fine. Like, we were still fine. It was just, People get in people's head, and it, it may just go from there. But but you're telling me today that you had come to terms with your husband having a child outside and married you, and the child was born two days before or after y'all. Three days after we got married. If you had asked me that six, seven, eight months ago, no, I had come. We had we had to go do therapy. I had to go through therapy. It took a lot of praying. It took a lot of soul searching. But at the end of the day, I had understood it. If that baby didn't, she did not ask to be here. She didn't put herself in that position. And I had even, it, I knew I had come to terms with it. Because nobody, a handful of people in Hattiesburg knew about your right. And that's why a lot of people here was upset with me because they said I had you right here, which I did because I was trying to accept this fact that this child, you know, it just basically came out of nowhere. But I knew I had come to terms with it on Father's Day when, when I called more, when I called Adriana and I said, hey, can you bring Jariah over? I got her and Aubrey some matching outfits and I want them to take a picture with their daddy. So... I could basically let the world know. And that's what I did. I, I think it was the cutest little pitch, Jariah, Audrey, and Morris. And I put it on Facebook. I told them, Happy Father's Day from your girls. And I wish you many more Father's Day to come. Okay, so you, you, had, you put that behind you. Yeah. And basically, you were dating Morris when this happened. When, when uh -huh, this child we, was we, we, Yeah, we were still, we just dating. And okay. you. Basically, put that behind. Mm -hmm. Then that was that the child wasn't going to be the thing that reminds you of that incident. Well, she that's what I'm for saying. the rest of her life, and that didn't bother you. No, that's what I'm saying. She did at first. That's why I had to go to therapy, and I had to um, I had to do a lot of praying and a lot of talking to God. But it gets to a point where you realize stuff happens. Stuff couldn't happen no more. You know, we married now, but he was still growing. Other than that, I couldn't find a single flaw in him. So I did. I I chose to stay. I chose to stay. Why would I put myself through that for a whole year? And then why am I gonna sit up here and tell y'all that we the only two people with this baby? If I knew I would sit up here and slammed her head into something. No. No. I, I, I know. I, so we're here to find out what it actually happened. Tell us what happened. I mean, I told you. I told y'all about four times now. Okay, so that's, that's, that's all you can provide us? That's it. 
That's it. Man, that's it. Y'all sure that's what he's saying? Want to read the short of the report? That's a preliminary report that we have so far. And Investigator Jefferson was there at the autopsy, and he witnessed it. And there's no way it could have happened before that night. It's not us and all that kind of stuff. You want to take a lot there? Yes, in a heartbeat. Whenever you got it ready, just let me know. Just let me know. As long as it's 100% reliable. Just let me know. The best lie detector is just basically we want to just let you just tell us what happened. I'm not accusing you. Well, if it was something where no, was, no, no, I ain't no. If something happened, no. Morris didn't hurt that baby. I didn't hurt that baby. No, no. I'm telling y'all, ain't no. Well, we did this or he did. No, I'm telling you, he put that baby in that bed. Wasn't no, wasn't no hitting nothing. The ride home was smooth because, like I said, that they tired. It was untrustworthy. I might can't remember some stuff, but I, I know, didn't we didn't do nothing to baby. Now, I'm not gonna let this get me because, like you said, it's just a provisionary report. The last report come out and say that this is what's wrong, then we got a problem. Well, I can assure you we have a problem. And what we need to do is get to the bottom of it. And I can assure you from my past experience, this is, uh, this is not my first rodeo. And I can assure you that we will get to the bottom of mm -hmm. it. And basically, for starters, that's what we have right now mm -hmm. is that the manner that the, the manner of death is homicide, and the cause of death is blunt trauma to the child's head. A 14-month-old child, and the child couldn't have walked around no. at all with the injuries that she sustained. There was no way she can walk around and act normal at all. That's the reason we were asking you the question. I'm that's saying that, and, I, and that's why I was being this un, I, and I got a sense of that when you kept asking me did she hit him but I'm telling you no 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 she didn't hit him is it something before. you forget no how do you know you forgot that sunroom I forgot there. that but that's a matter we just went in and talked this is This is this, this is so much different. Has she ever injured y'all here in the past? Yeah. Explain that to her. She was um. This was one day after her birthday. We were I just went and picked her up from her mama. We were gonna take her out to eat in Vicksburg. She had been walking for maybe like a month now. She was she was pretty good at it. And I got her, I got her out of the car, stood her stood her on the ground. I got Aubrey out, she was like three months at the time, three, four months, I got her out. And um, we walked to the house. All right, if you look at our driveway, it goes from smooth concrete to rocky concrete. And she got kind of caught up when she switched from smooth to, to rocky. And I believe her sandals, they caught up on the, um, on the uh the, the rocks in the concrete and she fell and she hit her head 
I immediately, I called Morris. I said, Morris, he was at football practice. I said, come on, come on home now. We need to take her out to high school. Um, she, we didn't, she, I told him, I put her in her car seat, hold her, and you talk to her the whole way there and keep her away. And he kept trying, he kept talking to her, kept talking to her. She was awake, she was alert. She tried to talk, she tried, she tried to fall asleep one time, but I told her, I said, let the window down, let the window down. The elf going in the face, it was keeping her up. We got to the hospital. The doctors were getting doctors say, yeah, I overreact. This, this happens. She's fine. She's okay. They put some needles for it on it. He sent us on our way. That was it. That's the only time she's been injured in our care. That's it. That's it. Anything about a black guy? That was around the same time. You just said that was the only time. Nah. Now, what about the black guy? That was around. It was. It was. She was in the living room. And it was, it wasn't even a black eye. It was this part right here. She was, we have bricks around our TV. And she was holding on to the bricks. This is when she was first, she was first, very first start. And she, she toppled and she hit that little corner right there. But didn't cry. Who was Maury over there? He was in the house. I want to say, I don't even know if, I'm trying to think of who was, but I know he told her about it, so I'm trying to think with him. I'm trying to think. Hmm. Um, I don't know. Did she go to the dock? It was just a little bump. It was, I mean, it wasn't even that big. No. I took her to the doctor when I noticed the hematoma come up on her forehead. When I saw when I saw that immediately, I took when I I took that baby. So you were more of a deal when she got the black eye. She got a hit on, you know, out of mm -hmm. in, in the house. Mm -hmm. And he told who about it? Adrian. He told mom about it. Mm -hmm. Anything else you had to say with the time? No, sir. Everything you told the true great will pass you to the best of the building? Yes, sir. Time now is 3.50 p.m. Oh, November 1st, 2017, the Clayton County Sheriff's Department. And once again, I'll have to give you a special name again. Let's go ahead and do it this time.